Tokia, yana leo, mi yan kekan san, mi wile pana e sona pitoki pona. Hey everyone, I'm Greg Dan3, and today I'm going to be talking about Toki Pona. Today we're going to be talking specifically about a couple of mini lessons names, numbers, and the word keen. So let's get into it with the content words for this lesson. I say content words, but we're actually starting with particles. There's keen, which is drawn similarly to a. But instead of having the shape of an A, it has a little star, a six-pointed star, or maybe an asterisk here at the bottom. It's spelled K-I-N, and it doesn't really have a meaning on its own. Instead, it says, hey, this thing is happening, and this other thing is happening at the same time. This thing is additional. It's kind of like the English word to, T-O-O where that says, hey, I'm doing this too, or I love you too, right? Keen works like this. Next, we have nanpa. In, a, in, p, a. Now, nanpa is drawn with this hash shape, two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, and it has to do with numbers. We'll get to how it works as a particle in a bit. Next, we have a couple of content words to get to. We have one, W, A, N. Now, the symbol for one is very similar to the number one as it's written with Arabic numerals, the ones used in English. One is both literally the actual number one and it has to do with uniting or combining things. Next, we have two, T U. Two is drawn with two vertical lines, kind of like tally marks, and it has to do with the literal number two and with dividing things into parts, especially into halves. It can also mean to double things. And the last content word for this lesson is Nimi, which I've drawn a little large here because I'm not the best at drawing it, but Nimi in I. M, I, is drawn with this box shape with little rounded corners that is wider than it is tall. And Nimi has to do with both words and names. So that's all the content words and particles for this lesson. Let's get into the topics. So for starters, I'm going to introduce the proper system, the system from Tokipona, the language of good, for writing names. And of course, in Tokipona, you can refer to things by their name. To do this, you start with describing the thing. You ask yourself, what kind of thing is this? So languages are Toki, games are usually Musi, and people are usually Yan. Then you can use the name of that thing right after, like a modifier. So I'm going to start with Sitilin Lasina, that is Latin characters, the alphabet we're familiar with in English. We could say mi lon ma kanse. Mi lon ma kanse. That is, I am in a place and that place's name is kanse. So when you're writing names in Sitalan Lasina, the first letter of the name is always capitalized. This is the only place in all of Tokipona where you use capital letters when you're referring to the names of things. Now, as you can see, this name is a modifier for ma right here, as I described, and that's pretty much it. Now, generally, it's best to compress the name down into Tokipona's phonetics. We're not going to get into that during this lesson series. It's kind of a vibes based thing anyway, so don't worry about it too much. If you're not really feeling it, you can totally just use a name you're familiar with that doesn't involve Tokipona's phonology. In which case, you might be wondering, what is Kanse? This is Tokipona's name for France. Now, when I say Tokipona's name, what I mean is, this is an approximation of the name France's people call the French language, Francais. In Tokipona, we allow places and people and things to provide their own name, where often other languages don't really do that. As another example of this, Japan is called Nippon by Japanese speakers, 
And so in Tokipona, it's generally called Ma Nippon, N I P O N. Of course, there's also another valid spelling in Nihon, so you might also see N I J O N, Ma Nihon. Both of those are valid because they're both valid names that Japanese speakers call Japan. So, this is the basic idea behind naming things in Tokipona. Now, we've seen this system in Sitlen Lasina, but what if you wanted to write in Sitlen Pona? Well, let's start with Mi, Lon, Ma, and then give me just a moment to write out all these bits. Here we go. Now, what's going on here? Well, this big box drawn around all these different symbols is called a cartouche. And when you have one of these, it means that all the words inside it are read by their first letter. Let's go through them. Here we have Kiwen, so that's K. There's Alasa, which is A. Nasin, which is In. Sewi, S. And Esun, E. So this is one way you can spell kanse using sitelenpona. You read out each of the first letters of each symbol in the box, and then you get to the word being spelled out. Now, it still has to follow Tokipona's phonetics, so you couldn't put two consonants next to each other unless, of course, you have something like this, where one syllable ends in in, and then the next one starts in a consonant besides im or in. But the rest of the time, this is totally okay. This is how you write names. So let's look at a quick exchange written with this system. Let's say we have Mi, Yan, Kepiken, Ilo, Mute, Ike. Draw a big box around those. And then we have our second person say Nimi, Sina, Li, Sui. And then Mi, Yan, Alasa Yan Ante. Big box around that. All right, let's read back through this. So the start of the conversation is Mi, Yan, and then we have all these symbols. That's Kepiken, Ilo, Mute, and Ike. So the first letter of each of these, we have K, I, M, I, Kimi. And then our second person says, Nimi Sina Lisui. Hey, your name's really cute. And then they introduce themselves. They say, Mi Yan Alasa Yan Ante. Well, the first letter of each of these is A, J, A. And so that's the name Aya. That's pretty much it for this system. But there is a fancier system that involves, well, a little bit more work. So let's get to that. This fancier system is called Sitalen Kalama. It works together with the system I just described. You can do both at once, but we have to introduce a new concept before we can begin. This system uses what are called more. More are like syllables, but they only go up to the vowel of a syllable because the in that can end a syllable is a whole mora on its own. Let's say we have the word sitelen, S-I-T-E-L-E-N. In sitelen, the mora are not the same as the syllables. In this case, the syllables are S-I-T-E-L-E-N, C-T-L-E-N. But as I described, the letter in at the end of a syllable is its own mora. So it is instead S-I-T-E-L-E and then in separate. So the word sitelen has three syllables, but four more. Now in a similar case, we have nanpa. In, a, in, p, a. The syllables are in, a, in, and then p, a, but the mora are in, a, in, and then p, a. We don't need to get into the details of why the system works this way. Just understand that Mora are a separate thing from syllables. In at the end of a syllable is its own mora. And this writing system cares about this. Let's figure out why. So using mora, we can write names in a new way. In the previous system, 
Kepiken inside of a cartouche is just the letter K. But if we add a dot onto the end of that, well, this dot says, complete the next mora. That's K-E. But it keeps going from there. You can add more. We can have Kep again with two dots. K-E-P-E, -E. Kepe. And this keeps going. You can go through every single mora in the word. So the next one is Kepe Ke. And finally, we have And this is the entire word kepeken. Again, each dot says you include a mora. So if we count out the mora in kepeken, we get one, two, three, four. And that's as many dots as we have. So that seems pretty straightforward. Quick little side note, you might be wondering why I drew all these dots so far apart. The intention is that they're actually given the same amount of space as a normal Citalinpona character, and those are usually drawn with the same width. Kepiken and each dot should take about the same space. You'll have to forgive me for my handwriting just a bit, but the system does enjoy cleanliness. Let's go on to another example, a very important little case in here. If the word is normally read in a way that already has a full mora, you still go on to the next one. And this is important for words that start with vowels, because vowels are also complete mora. So here's an example with anpa. Anpa, inside a cartouche, is read just A. Anpa, with a single dot inside a cartouche, is now A in. So A is, of course, A mora all on its own, and so is the letter in. So that first dot doesn't actually care about the A here. It says, oh, well, just give me the next one. There's already a mora here. Lastly, anpa with two dots, A in P A. There's your entire reading. Then one more example of how this works. Let's do this with Ike. So of course, Ike inside a cartouche all on its own is read E and then Ike with one dot in a cartouche is actually the entire word, Ike. And that is how it will be pronounced and read. One last little note. Obviously, the word Kepiken and a couple of other words are a little bit long to write with this system, especially if you have a word like Sinpin that has two more that are just the letter in in there. So if you wanted to use an entire word, but you don't want a bunch of dots, you can use a colon to refer to the entire word at once without all the dots. And so, Kepiken, with a colon after it, is read as the entire word. Kepiken. Lastly, let's do a little introduction. Let's say we have somebody named Kawalo introducing themselves, and then somebody else named Setaluki responding written in this system. Here we go. Toki, mi, yan, kawalo. And then the person who responds. Toki ya, mi, yan, se, ta, luki. So breaking this down real quick, where the writing system is concerned, we have kala with one dot. So that's just the first part ka, the first mora. Then we have walo with a colon after it. So that's the entire word. Together, everything in this first cartouche is kawalo. So this first statement is toki mi yan kawalo. Then the second person says tokia mi yan. And then we have in the cartouche, Sewi with one dot, so that's se. Tawa also with one dot, so that's ta. Together that's seta. And then we have another cartouche after that. Now this is totally okay. It's fairly common practice to have two different words for your one name. It works basically the same as you'd expect. The word lukin is here with two dots, and that's 
Luki. So, Yan Seta Luki. Tokia, Mi Yan Seta Luki. Now, no matter how you write names in Tokipona, they aren't set in stone. Different speakers are going to use different names for the same places, and sometimes for the same things as well. It's just as okay as describing the same one thing in two different ways. For your own name, just pick something you love. All right, and now we're gonna get on to numbers. Quick foreword about numbers. Tokipona does have numbers, and it does have ways to get specific about numbers, but they're not really important. If there are a lot of things, you can use mute. If there are a few things, you can try mute lili, and maybe you can just drop the idea of the amount of a thing. Numbers really aren't important in Tokipona, and as you learn more, you'll understand why that is even better. But let's still talk about how to express numbers in Tokipona. Now, I said before that Tokipona has exactly two numbers, and they are one, which is one, and two, which is two. They intentionally sound like the same numbers in English. So when you're counting things with these numbers, you use them like modifiers. So they follow the thing they modify, and they tell you how many of that thing there are. Let's look at the sentence. O, kama, yo, e, ilo, tu, one. O kama yo e ilo tu wan. Altogether, that's an instruction to go get tools. And how many tools? Well, we have two and one, and together that's three. Numbers in Tokipona work like modifiers. So in this example, two wan is kind of like having a single modifier that means three. Obviously, the system that I just introduced for numbers is not the best. If you really want to talk about numbers in Tokipona, well, there is another way to do it. So let's look at that system. Of course, we still have one, which means one, and two, which means two. Here, we have the word Luca, and it means five. Luca is the word for hand or arm, and here, we're worried about its exact meaning as five. That meaning, of course, comes from the fact that there are five fingers on your hand. So, Luca, your word for hand, is also used in this number system to mean five. Then, we have mute, which can mean exactly 20. And finally, we have ale, which means exactly 100. Again, numbers aren't really important in Tokipona, so I advise against using this system. It does come up, people do use it, and for what it's worth, it's a pretty clean system. Obviously, it's not gonna let you refer to numbers like a million, but when was the last time you personally had to deal with one million of a thing, right? Let's go over a quick examples of how this is used just to be sure that you understand it. We have Sina, yo, e, kasi, mute, luca, tu. Sina, yo, e, kasi, mute, luca, tu. Count that up. Mute is 20, Luca is 5, and 2 is 2. So this whole statement altogether is you have 27 plants. Next one. We could say Yan, Ale, Ale, Wan, Li, Lon. So Ale here is exactly 100. 100 plus 100 plus 1, that's 201. And this statement altogether means 201 people are here. They are present. Maybe they're in the building. Let's do one more. Mi, Lukin, E, Lipu, Luca, Luca, Luca. I am looking at five plus five plus five, 15 pieces of paper. That's really it. Tokipona's more advanced numbering system is the same thing as a small numbering system with just one and two, but with a couple of larger numbers tacked on. Most of the time, you really are just going to use mute, but here you go. If you want big numbers, you can do it. Quick little aside, one and two are both content words in addition to their meanings as numbers. So you could say something like, mi wan e lipu ale, that is, I unite or combine all the papers or all the documents as if I were physically assembling a book. 
or bringing everything together in a binder. And then in a similar vein, Soeli li tu emoku tawa pana. That's something like the animal divides the food to give. You can also use the word nanpa to rank things. So we can have the sentence Ni li pona nanpa wan tawa mi. That is, this is the most good thing to me personally. This is my favorite thing. And there are other things you can rank as well. Of course, you can say nanpa two and nanpa two one to respectively refer to second and third, but you can also use things like nanpa open meaning the first, or nanpa pini, the last. Now, quick note about how nanpa functions. It's a lot like the word pi, except nanpa can have only one word after it, and that's totally okay. It can also have more than one word after it. Either way, it'll group the things that follow it into a single modifier, and then that's gonna go on to modify whatever came before. So, we discussed the word keen before. Keen makes something additional or extra to something else. Like I said, it's similar to the word to, T-O-O, in English. So, keen can be used in the subject. We could say, mi keen li wile ni. That is, I also want to do this. More specifically, this means that there's somebody else in addition to me, who wants to do this thing. We could also say, Kasi li loye kin. This plant is also red, in addition to being, presumably, some other color. You could do this in the object, where we could have, Mi lukin e lipu kin. Quick little aside, here I've kind of drawn a lazy five-pointed star instead of an asterisk, Basically the same, it's still keen. So this statement, me looking a lipu keen, means I am looking at a document as well. I'm looking at something else besides that document. I could be looking at another document, or a big old tree, or an entire barn. But I'm looking at something and this document. We have one more example of keen. We could say, ona li pana e ni tawa. Sina kin. That is, they gave this to you as well. And then there's somebody else or something else that received whatever this, whatever ni is. So you can have kin in pretty much every part of speech and it works exactly like you'd expect. You make the thing that is in that part of speech additional to something else. So subjects, there's another subject that's doing that thing. Predicates, there's another action that the subject is doing. Objects, there's another object that the action is applied to. And predicates, well, that depends on the predicate, but rest assured that there's something else going on that makes that keen make sense. Hey, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening along, and I hope you learned something really cool today. If you like these Tokipono lessons, be sure to like, subscribe, I'm doing the YouTuber thing. And hey, you can also check out my website, muin.la. Here you can find all these lessons written out for you to read. You can check them out anytime. You don't have to listen. You can be on the bus, maybe forgot your headphones at home, and you go, oh, Man, I really wish I could listen to Jan Kekan-san's Tokipono lessons, but I can't. I guess I'll settle for reading them on his website, moon.la. That sure was a bit. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Have a good one.